everyone, B. Grimm here. We are on episode 8 of Magical Meditations, and I got it out on time this week. Um, I missed one whole week and then was late, and yeah, so, but we're back on schedule this time. Today's episode, uh, number 8, going through the illustrated herbiary, is Distill Yourself, Time. And as always, here's the, uh, the artwork. The artwork on this book is just absolutely beautiful. And honestly, I should have brought up my time plant. I do actually have some little itty bitty baby time plants growing, but they are downstairs in my kitchen in the window sill. So let's get started. Distill yourself. Time. Timus vulgaris. Mythology teaches that a minotaur haunts the labyrinth of your psyche. As you walk toward your center, this monster prowls and roars, trying to scare you off your path by revealing your fears and inadequacies. But you're never truly alone. You have allies like Time, who are sent purifying your thoughts so you can see what's true. Time kills off what's other, whether that's germs and microbes or thoughts and feelings. This is time's special magic. She calls your inner flame to burn the dross, distilling your spirit. Intuitively, she knows you from not you. And she sees you clearly when you cannot. Time is a powerful plant. Do not call on her unless you're truly ready to be tempered in her flame. The ritual says, the labyrinth is an ancient construct meant to mirror our path through life. The twisting and turning, the feeling of being so close to our goal only to be guided away. Unlike a maze, a labyrinth has no dead ends or wrong turns. Walking it eases the mind and relaxes the body. If you have a labyrinth nearby, which you can easily find with an internet search including your town name and the word labyrinth, go out and walk it. You won't regret it. If you don't have one near you, create some quiet for yourself and trace the labyrinth in the picture with your finger, letting your eyes follow your finger as it moves toward the center. Your movement through a labyrinth is a microcosmic metaphor for the, macro, for the macrocosm of your life's journey. Reflect on any thoughts or feelings that come up as though, they're, as though they concern not just the micro moment of being in the labyrinth, but the macro moment of your life path. Always follow the path all the way to the center and then follow the same path back out. Move at your own pace. Pause where you want to, especially at the center, and layer in any meditative practices that speak to your soul. And then for the reflection, it says, have you seen your true path and turned away? Or have you stepped onto the path only to become unsure or distracted? Time is calling you back. If you accept, if you whisper yes in the wee hours of the morning, you'll find time both demanding and true. Kind of like that. I like any sort of like meditative, especially if it's something that I can visualize or really get into. Um, so, on to the magical, medicinal, and pet friendly or not friendly qualities of the plant thyme. Thyme, of course, is a time honored herb for seasoning. Um, especially in dishes with chicken. There's a whole song, Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme, about how those four go together so well. The magical properties that I could find were courage, healing, health, love, uh, and psychic protection. Uh, it's associated with the feminine gender, the planet Venus, and the element of water. <clears throat> The medicinal properties <clears throat> include respiratory issues, gastric issues, any sort of parasites, well, parasitic worms, skin disorders, it's a diuretic, a stimulant, and it's good for halitosis, which is just a very fancy word for bad breath. Um, it is possible to be allergic to it, and it can possibly be a skin irritant. And it can slow blood clotting. <clears throat> Um, and it's not good for people with estrogen sensitivities or homo hormone issues with estrogen. 
Um, so, and also because of the blood clotting, you don't want to take, you don't want it like near surgery. Um, all I could find in regards to pet safety is just that it's non-toxic. So, as with most things, I err on the side of moderation is key. Uh, the quote here is, life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself by Walt Whitman. So, next week's episode, I believe, is number nine. I believe it's Dandelion. And hopefully, I will have a chance to do the review of, uh, was it Lily's Wonderland, I think is what it's called? Yeah, Lily's Wonderland. I keep wanting to say Wally's Wonderland. And I know that that's not right, but I keep wanting to call it Wally's Wonderland. Um, so yeah, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you're seeing this on like Instagram or TikTok, please, please follow the, the link in the bio to my YouTube channel and watch the whole video. Um, let me know what you think. Um, these videos are about five to seven minutes long. And I really don't want to upload that in seven or eight increments on on TikTok or Instagram. I've done that before. Um, and I don't want to do that again. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But if you want to see the whole video, and I really wish you would, um, please just follow the link. As always, like, subscribe, comment, please leave me feedback. And uh, yeah. See you guys next week.